Uh, well, meanwhile, IRS Commissioner John Koskinen is set to testify tomorrow in front of the House Oversight Committee about the IRS's response to investigations of the agency's targeting controversy. Chairman of that committee and Republican representative for California, Congressman Darrell Issa, joins me now from Capitol Hill. Congressman, thanks very much for your time today. Well, thank you, Maria, and thank, thank you for covering what is now an over-a-year-old scandal in which the president promised to work hand-in-hand -hand with Congress to get to the bottom of the targeting of conservative groups by the IRS. Yeah, this is over a year old, and it's surprising that you don't see more of it in the press, actually. Uh, so we want to we wanna be there. What, what do you think you can actually get out of, uh, of him tomorrow, given the fact that we are a year into it? Uh, Lois Lerner took the fifth. What do you think is achievable in terms of getting real information about whether or not they did target uh, conservatives? Well, we've already made the, uh, the proof of, if you will, that they targeted conservatives, and we believe we can properly prove that there was no, that, that it's false to claim that progressive groups were also targeted. However, what we don't have, for example, is all of Lois Lerner's emails uh, pursuant to a, a request and then a subpoena now that's nearly a year old. Uh, we're going to ask the commissioner to commit to turn over expeditiously those emails for which there is no claim of executive privilege or lawful reason to withhold that, something that the IRS has been unwilling to do uh, for a reason that we can only feel is a uh, possible embarrassment in those documents, but embarrassment is not a reason to withhold pursuant to a lawful subpoena. And you think you'll be able to get those emails? Well, I think that it's clear that if the administration will not deliver on documents which Congress is entitled to, that uh, we're going to have to go down a road of enforcement again, as we did in Fast and Furious when the president uh, ex asserted executive privilege over the cover-up of false statements made to Congress. You're also pressing the Department of Justice for more information about contact that government lawyers reportedly made with Lois Lerner. What's behind that? Well, what's behind that is the bizarre situation in which a agency that cannot put her in jail, which is Congress, she refuses to answer questions, but apparently answered questions without a promise of immunity to a favorable uh, Department of Justice, one in which Obama contributors are allowed to lead investigations. Uh, we'd like to know what those questions were and the answers, since our understanding is that uh, there many of those questions should have been the same questions we asked her, and she refused to answer 10 times, uh, claiming her Fifth Amendment privilege. Right. Well, this also sort of leads me to another issue, which I know you're pursuing, and that is you're asking the White House to turn over all records related to the president's decision earlier this year to start a new office, closing the Office of Political Affairs, but then reopening it in January uh, with a smaller staff, but calling it the Office of Political Strategy and Outreach. Are you saying that taxpayer money is, is uh, paying for this political group that's basically pursuing the interests of the Democrats? Well, I certainly think that that is what Senator Barack Obama said when he committed to close this if he were elected. Uh, he did close it. He closed it saying that there wouldn't be this kind of political activity. He also said there wouldn't be lobbying in the White House. As we know, you've got to go across the street to a coffee shop now if you want to lobby with White House executives. But uh, reopening it is troubling. The president doesn't have another election other than the midterm elections in which he'd like to regain the House and maintain the Senate. Uh, and that's fine. He has every right to do that with the Democratic National Committee and his 501c4 uh, OFA. But the question is, should taxpayers pay for him to strategize how to uh, best hold the House and the Senate? And we think that's inappropriate, just as Senator Barack Obama said it was inappropriate under the Bush administration. Right, right. I, I understand. Let, let me ask you, Congressman, how are you going to get the skeptics to believe that it's not you with an agenda, but that this is the, the same story as, for example, you know, Chris Christie and the Bridgegate scandal and, you know, basically making it tougher for the other side, his political rivals. Uh, the same thing went on with the IRS. Uh, targeting their political rivals, uh, and, and, and how do you make sure people understand this is not you coming with an agenda, and this is actually uh, real uh, abusing of power? Well, under Richard Milhouse Nixon, Article 2 of impeachment was, in fact, using the IRS against political enemies. And it was Republicans that turned on the president 
for this and other types of activities by that administration. Uh, I think when you look at it, this isn't a partisan issue. The American people expect the IRS to be to quite frankly, not an organization we like, but one that we can respect at least to know that they're not targeting us based on our religious or political beliefs. And uh, we no longer can, can do that since Lois Lerner very clearly decided that she was going to backdoor and force uh, Citizens United uh, shortly after the president wagged his finger effectively at the U.S. Supreme Court in the House of the uh, Representatives. This is a situation in which the documents on Lois Lerner that we have received show that she was pursuing an agenda in which she said don't make it per se political, but she also said, and this is from her documents, her emails, uh, that everyone wants us to do it, the FEC can't do it, they want us to do it. Those kinds of statements in her own words, in her own emails, tell us what her motivation was. It doesn't tell us whether she talked to the commissioner and whether he went to the White House over 100 times and included discussions of Citizens United, but it does tell us that we had somebody who was partisan in a high position in Washington who oversaw the delay of countless uh, 501c4s if they were conservatives and nothing of the kind for progressive groups, including obviously the president's uh, Organized for Action, which uh, is a similar group and was unimpeded. Yeah, I've got, I've got to move on to something else. I want to move on to the NSA, but but let me finally uh, ask you this final question on on the IRS scandal, and that is how far are you willing to take this? I mean, here we are a year later, you know, Lois Lerner takes the fifth. We still are looking for the proof that, in fact, they targeted uh, conservatives because they were political enemies. What's your end game? How willing are you for, how, how far are you willing to take this? Well, the American people expect the House and the Senate to be a balance for the executive branch and excesses of the executive branch, not just the president, but all of his appointees and the entire administration. So whether it's EPA or OSHA or the IRS or any of these agencies, we have an obligation to use all the tools we have to discover, to explain, and then to hold accountable. So whether it's possible criminal referrals of people at the IRS who did wrong, uh, holding Lois Lerner potentially in contempt, uh, or even the commissioner, these are all tools that we have to consider and bring to a vote at the appropriate time. The, the president, of course, last night coming up with a new plan in terms of the uh, NSA and spying on Americans. What's your opinion of what the president has said and what, what do regular folks need to understand about their privacy being, comp uh, uh, being compromised um, in the face of you know, efforts to, to, to get a handle on terrorists? Well, I think that the, uh, the use of the term terrorist has, uh, has become a catch-all for everything that the executive branch and clandestine agencies want to do. Uh, I might include in the NSA the, uh, the allegation that the CIA spied on Senator Feinstein, something that I've called treason. The fact is that the executive branch has huge power. It has all the power. And that means that Congress has an obligation to ask, are they abusing it? And in this case, the NSA, with the president's new plan, he's almost admitting that he wants legislation to let him do what he's already been doing. And that tells us that what he did really was outside the intent of Congress. The NSA's gathering does seem to be uh, potentially trampling on the Fourth Amendment. But again, Senator Feinstein's claim that it goes further, that uh, the CIA actually went into her computers, a breach of the separation of powers, represents probably the most serious allegation and one that I think is somewhat being overlooked, not because the American people aren't important, they are, but if you don't respect even a senator, a Democratic senator of your own party, chairwoman of the Select Intelligence Committee in the Senate, uh, then it's pretty clear the American people have a great deal to fear about what their rights and how they would be respected. And of course, you said the executive branch has all the power, which is why people would like to see balance come 2014 in the elections. You are set to run for re-election in the uh, House for 2014. Uh, what are your prospects and what do you expect out of the Senate, uh, the Senate elections in 2014 this year? 
Well, I expect the House will pick up some seats. That's traditional in, a, in this final election, and I think we're, we're geared for it, even though we're being outspent. I think the Senate is a, a situation in which I really believe the American people are likely to move the Senate into Republican control, uh, where Republicans would undo some of the onerous changes that uh, Senator Reid has made, including return the filibuster, return the right of the minority, uh, all of which is important, but it also means that the president is not going to have a rubber stamp if that happens uh, to his appointments and to all the processes he wants to have. And it also means for the first time during this president's uh, tenure, the Senate committees would be able to look into Fast and Furious, the IRS and others. Uh, quite frankly, where they haven't been doing it. They've been pretty much giving the president a pass. Yeah. Real quick, Congressman, you've uh, subpoenaed the head of the EPA uh, because, uh, because of the rejection of the permit for an Alaska mine. The president said he's going to decide on Keystone in the next couple of months. What are you expecting there and expecting to get out of this EPA uh, subpoena? Well, obviously, in the case of Keystone, the president's already given a great deal to his political left by delaying and delaying the Canadians' access to uh, tie into the Nebraska uh, pipeline to get their oil to the world market. Uh, but in the case of the pebble mine in Alaska, I think what we have here is an extremely dangerous precedent if it's allowed to stand. The idea that the EPA would let an organ, a state and, uh, and a company spend t tens of millions of dollars, and then when they're about to make an application, proactively tell them you need not apply. The EPA has every right to look at an application, evaluate it, and make sure that our air and water are kept safe. But the idea that they would say, don't even apply, seems outlandish to any lay person out there. And that's effectively what the EPA is doing and refusing to give us documents about how they planned to uh, proactively deny due process to, uh, to a potential mine that could free us of some of our dependence on imported copper. Congressman, thanks very much for your time and the update. We'll be following uh, that.